If you will, go with me to Psalm 11. Psalm 11. And if you catch me worshiping, don't mind me, because there are certain times when passion and exuberance are necessary. You know, on that last drive of the game this weekend, <laughs> exactly, I don't even have to finish the sentence. You probably weren't sitting there like, oh, come on, guys, you can do it. I just, oh, that's awesome, they scored, yay. No, you're like, come on! <laughs> Jesus, please don't let Romo mess up again. <laughs> it's gonna ruin my week. You know why you're passionate about your favorite teams and your favorite sports figures or your favorite whatever, artist, entertainers? Something about them you are connected to. And when they do well, you feel that you're doing well. And most of those things are an illusion. But in the kingdom, because of what Jesus did, we have a victory that is assured every single time we wake up in the morning. Every time you open your eyes, the devil's like, dang, gone. We lost again. Because you carry so much authority and so much power that the moment you step up, you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And so don't mind me if I shout tonight because 2014 was not the easiest year in the world for me. My son had emergency surgery, he had a condition, and by the time they found it, they said he could have gone into cardiac arrest at any moment. My wife had a cancer scare, they thought she had cancer, they did surgery for three hours. When they came out, turned out there was no cancer, and I told that doctor there wasn't no cancer in my wife. I have not been married less than four years for, to be a widower. She's gonna live and be sick of me for about at least 60, 70 years, so. You ain't getting out that easy, honey. And so for every victory, my praise got louder. And every now and then, it's okay to let the Lord know you appreciate the consistent victories that he has given you in the kingdom of God through Christ Jesus. It's all right to shout for your favorite team. It's a little better to shout for the living God. We are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. We know that we have an enemy, but no matter what he did, it's clear by your presence here and your presence online and on TV that he failed. You are a living testimony to the failure of the enemy. That should put a smile on your face. It didn't mean that his attacks didn't hurt, didn't mean you weren't wounded, but you are here. And if you are here, you are a living witness to the power of the Holy Spirit and the greatness of our God and the failure of the enemy is evident in your praise. 2014 was not the easiest year. Not for us as a people, for the people of God, for us as a nation. Many things happened in 2014 that were sent by the enemy to break us in half, to separate us, to divide us, to cause dissension and anger and hostility. And so many unspoken things were brought to the surface. It was a very intense year. And I want to make an announcement that if you can survive 2014, you can survive anything. I'm looking at a church filled with survivors. First things first, you are a survivor. You are phenomenal. Look at you with your bad self, with your blue button down shirt on, sir, and your khaki pants and your brown shoes. Look at you, ma'am, with your nice premium sweater and your high heel boots. Look at you, young person, with whatever cool, hip, tight jeans you're wearing, skinny jeans that I cannot wear because God has not given me that physique quite yet. Look at you sitting here anointed, filled with the power of God, still passionate, still serving, still worshiping. Even after every single attack of the enemy, you are still in a church with your hands lifted up, with a praise on your lips, with a hunger to keep serving him. That is worthy of a holiday.
Psalm 11. <laughs> Psalm 11, the enemy tried all year. And let me say this, the more I attend and come to this church, the more I see the heart of God beating over and over, seeing multiple nations, multiple races, and multiple uh, diverse ethnicities, and all of the generations that are here. And this shall be the legacy of the kingdom of God, that the answers to the issues of society will be found in the church. If we want to break all of these issues that have been breaking our, our nation in half, I believe the answers are found in the church. For there is no white, no black, no green, no blue. The only color that matters in here is red, and it's the blood of Jesus. And I believe that the blood of Jesus can break down every racial barrier and every place of tension and pain that the enemy has sent. You all have been given a great gift here. And I speak to you as one of the lighthouses in this earth that God is getting ready to bring you into 2015, no strings attached. That's my title for those who are writing down because I know Gateway, y'all, Pastor Robert, have y'all taken notes? Y'all come to class. <laughs> no strings attached. Psalm 11, <laughs> still, haven't, still haven't gotten the scripture out. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. Doesn't it seem that the enemy attacks when you're trying to serve God? Many of us just need to remember what we were doing before the blood found us. It seemed that it was easier then. The moment you really begin to get serious about God, that's when all the attacks happen. I don't know about you, but there are times that I've had some real honest dialogue with the Lord. I'm like, okay, Jesus, I've been serving you. They don't serve you. How come things are going well for them? I'm not judging. I'm just saying they nasty and... I just need to know, I've been serving you. Why you ain't blessing me? They got a new car. My car is on either. Or the engine light is on. I need you to do something, Jesus. Grown man, Jesus. Baby Jesus. Jesus with the goatee. Jesus with the sandals on. Jesus from the History Channel. Whichever one I need to talk to. Because the people that don't do right seem to be living it up. While the ones who are serving God seem to be struggling. There are times when I pray my prayers and the Lord doesn't answer when I need him to or when I think I need him to. And there were times when I thought that his silence was his displeasure. But in 2014, the silence of God was not his displeasure. It was his development. God is developing mature believers in this season through silence. Because you grow by the word of God. When my children, my, I have two little children. I got a two-year-old and a one-year-old. They're 11 months apart because <laughs> that's how I roll. Um, <laughs> my wife said to the house, hey, baby, <laughs> daddy's coming home tomorrow. Um, I have to speak to my children over and over again because they need to learn. But if I'm still speaking to them the same lessons that I was teaching at 2, at 18, something's wrong in their development. And for many of us, we're saying, God, you're not speaking to me like you used to. He says, because I'm growing you up. I'm maturing you. I'm developing you for another season, a new season in your life where you will be able to produce fruit and you won't need to hear every direction right away because you'll be led by my spirit. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So take heart. If it seems like God is not speaking as much in an audible voice, trust that his spirit is guiding you. Be encouraged that in this season, he's moving away from the training wheels and he's going to let you soar into your destiny destiny and you're going to move into your purpose like never before. You're walking into your season of affluence and influence and power and prominence and authority and you shall do so with no strings attached. 
says they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. Third verse, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. Can I tell you that for many of us, 2014 was quite the test. 2014 was a test of endurance, of patience, of your passion in worship, endurance in business. 2014 was a test. But if you were able to maintain your worship, maintain your passion, maintain your commitment in spite of the emotional drain or the lack of desire to do so, then you have matured and you have passed the test. God is God on our best day, the same as he is on our worst day. Who he is does not change based on our conditions, so neither should our worship change based on our conditions. And many of the conditions of 2014 were not the easiest, but yet Yet and still, here we are with hands lifted in a new year, expectant that God is going to do new things. That means you pass the test. The sixth verse, upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteousness, and his countenance or his face beholds the upright. I want to jump back to the second verse that says, the wicked bend their bow and they make their arrow ready on the string. The enemy has been very clear on attacking people of power and influence, people who are world changers. And if there is an attack, may I offer to you Matthew 3.16 as some comfort. As Jesus was being baptized by John, he came up out of the water and suddenly a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son, 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 <laughs> in whom I'm well pleased, pleased, pleased. And then a dove came down. And there were... There were angels singing, ah, you know what I'm saying? It was holding, oh, amen, oh, amen. Sound like Carrie, and you know, because Carrie, that girl can sing. That girl, she got, she got some black people in her family. She sing like she got somebody in there with some pigmentation. You better sing. Okay. So they were singing, and there was this huge announcement. That's my boy. Now, I would have understood the announcement of heaven had Jesus just raised Lazarus from the dead. I would have understood the announcement had he caused the man with the withered hand to stretch it out. I would have understood the announcement of heaven had Jesus already healed the paralyzed man whose four friends tore the roof off just to get him there. I would have understood the announcement if the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years had been healed or the little girl that he healed three verses later had gotten up from the death bed. But none of that had happened, yet God announced Jesus as his son. This blesses me because I need to know and you need to know that my sonship has nothing to do with my activities. I'm a son because I have his DNA. I belong to him because I came from him and I get to go back to him. And I'm excited about that. Not too excited, I don't want to go no time soon. I want to be down here a while, go fishing, maybe go hunting with Pastor Robert or something. But for many of us, the enemy wants you to work, work, work to please God. But it's not your works that please God, take the strings off. His love for you is no strings attached. His commitment to you is no strings attached. 
There's nothing that you did to earn his favor or his love, and there's nothing you can do for him to stop loving you. What Jesus did paid the price. What Jesus did finished the work. All we have to do is believe on faith, confess it with our mouth, and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. We shall be saved. We're in right relationship with the Father because of what Jesus did. And I'm excited that God announced, that's my son, (laughs) ha-ha, and he hadn't done one thing. This is critical because the attack from the enemy didn't come until after the announcement. If there's any attack in your life, it's because heaven has just announced you. You can spot the favor of God based on the attack on your life. If he's attacking in your marriage, God just announced it. Look at that marriage. I'm well pleased. I can't tell. She get on my nerves, Jesus, do something. (laughs) Perhaps your children aren't as passionate about God as you want them to. God's saying, those are my young people. I'm well pleased. The enemy will attack right away. And he attacks there where he attacks every other announced individual identity. If you're the son of God, command these stones to become bread. If you're the son of God, throw yourself down from here. If, if, if. But I want you to know that your identity comes with no strings attached. Your purpose comes with no strings attached. You don't have to explain anything to the devil. He is not your peer, and he is not on your level. Stop talking to him face to face. You want to talk to the devil, write a note on the bottom of your shoe because Jesus put him under your feet. Would you just say no strings attached? The enemy bends the bow. Pastor Robert shared with me a story of some colleagues, I guess they were hunting, and there's a such thing as bow hunting. Has anyone in here ever been bow hunting? Can I see your hands? So there are strings that you have to have a certain level of tension in order for there to be enough power that when you pull back and let the arrow go, there's enough force that the arrow penetrates the intended target. The enemy thrives on tension. Any area of your life where tension exists, the enemy's going to play it to his advantage. If there is a tension in your heart because of something financial, if you're a little worried about your 401k and your Roth IRA because of what's going on in the financial markets and oil is down by 50%, then that means you are creating tension in that area and the enemy will use that tension to draw an attack. If there's tension because of a report from a doctor, the enemy will feed on that fear and he will form a weapon. The enemy needs tension from us in order Order to form the weapons. But you know what neutralizes the weapons of the enemy? The joy of the Lord. In this year, 2015, the year of Jubilee, and I'm sure you're going to hear about it all year. This is a super year of Jubilee. This is the 50th year. This is the 40th Jubilee since Jesus was on the earth. 40 was always God's time of testing. This was always his time of proving God is going to do something significant. I don't have to tell you about the significance of the signs in the earth and all of the different things that have been going on. I don't have to tell you about the blood moons. You can read Genesis 118 that the sun and the moon are for signs and for seasons and and for days and years, but the first thing God said was for signs. And if you just look at the signs, there were blood moons in three other years, 1492, 1942, 1967. In 1492, we know what happened in this country. In 1942, Israel was born. In 1967, the Six-Day War, and Jerusalem was given back to Israel. The next time we have four blood moons in a calendar year is 
this year, which means God is about to do something that shakes the entire planet. And you don't think the enemy's going to attack the people of God? And I am going to fight the attack with the joy of the Lord. Don't let the enemy steal your joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's Nehemiah chapter 8. And let me tell you something. That word in that scripture means the joy of the Lord is your strength or a defense against the enemy. That means literally your worship, your laughter actually builds a wall upon which the arrows of the enemy cannot penetrate. So look at the worst circumstances in your life and I need you to start laughing <laughs> now this is personal to me because I was in prayer with pastor and some of the elders before service because I got a report on the last day of the year concerning something in my health it's very serious in fact I should be crying in fact I should be worried but my response is <laughs> Now, I know I sound crazy because what the doctor said is a factual report, but facts do not equal truth because a fact is what men say. Truth is who Jesus is. I need some help in here that no matter what the enemy throws, you want to confuse the enemy by keeping your joy why is he still worshiping? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. I should be on the floor screaming and crying, but I know too much about God to stop praising now. He's brought me through every trial, every situation, every tribulation, and I know that he did not bring me this far to leave me. If I can survive 2014, I'm coming into my promise. No strings attached. I got one witness, two witnesses, I got three, I got four, Carrie, I got somebody else in here. If you're at home, right there in your living room, you can give God a praise with your family and declare that you are coming into victory. No strings attached, no chains holding me. I will not be held hostage by fear, condemnation, shame, or guilt for Jesus. five more seconds of praise so I can drink some water. <laughs> What's up, BC? See, this is a year of jubilee. That's outrageous, contagious, crazy joy that makes no sense. The kind of joy that people are like, he's weird. Why, yes, I am. <laughs> this is a year of supernatural debt cancellation. And this is not just financial. We're past financial. We know God's going to take care of that. This is the part I love. Even creditors that don't want to let you go have to let you go. I want you to know sickness is a debt holder and he wants to hold your body hostage. But whatever he had in 14, he has to let go of it in 15. And I want you to get this in your spirit that whatever you're in debt to has to let you go in this year. If you could get to 1159 on December 31st of 2014, the moment you crossed over, it had to stay there. And that is the power of no strings attached. The enemy formed his weapon but we know what the Bible says no weapon for shall what didn't say it wouldn't hurt didn't say he wouldn't hit you it just said it wouldn't kill you and you survived it's a hilarious thing to watch the enemy thinking he's got a believer I've hit him with depression and guilt and shame and sickness and the arrows hit ow 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 ooh. And we take off running just like when you're hunting you might hit an animal and it'll take off running you know what you do you follow the blood trail the enemy wounded me 
And I took off running, but I didn't run in fear. I ran to the place. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. He didn't know when he hit me, I wouldn't go down. I'd run to my Savior, because there's something in that blood. Like Carrie was singing, oh, the blood of the Lamb. Singing, oh, the blood of the Lamb. What a sacrifice to save my life. Oh, the blood, it is my victory. And the enemy hit me, but he thought he hit me with a death blow. But little did he know Colossians 3 and 3 belongs to me. It says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And since I'm already dead, you hit me. If I'm bleeding, dead men can't bleed. So whose blood was it? The enemy messed around and followed the blood trail and came up on what he thought was me. But he didn't find me. He found a man. 33 years old, spotless lamb, standing in front of me saying, this one belongs to me. And the devil had to stay on his knees and say, I was just playing, excuse me, you are the king of kings and lord of lords. I, w I don't even know why I mess with him. I don't even know why I mess with Gateway. I don't even know why I mess with Pastor Robert. I don't know why I mess with your family. The devil thought he was coming after you and messed around and met Jesus. Somebody give God five seconds of praise. If Jesus has been your fence, Jesus be a fence all around me every day. Oh, a couple more people can just bless him right there. I'm excited because the strings of the enemy, the cords of the wicked, I found no rest in me. Psalm 119, verse 61, says, The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. At midnight. You know, in 2015, you're going to have opportunities to give God a midnight praise. It's easy to praise when you got the worship team behind you and everybody's singing great and you got a 35-piece band. <laughs> I don't even know, one of the drum, I think the drummer had this long thing, it's like from Australia. What is that? I don't even know what that is. It was like a woolly mammoth tusk. It was awesome. <laughs> I was like, what is that back there? But if you really want to give the devil a black eye, you're going to have to give God a midnight praise. A midnight praise when nothing makes sense. A midnight praise when no one else is around. A midnight praise when it hurts. When the tears are falling from one eye over the bridge of your nose to the other as you let them fall to the pillow, but you still say, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. I know who you are. I've seen too much. I know too much. I can't doubt you now. I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hand. Why don't you just hold to his hand? God's unchanging hand. Hold, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. And build your hope on things eternal. No, oh, oh, to God's unchanging hand. Hold on in the midnight hour. And every now and then, you're going to need somebody to worship with you. See, the Bible says in Acts, and at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God. And the prisoners heard them. 
Immediately the foundation of the prison was shaken and everyone's bands were loosed. Sometimes you need somebody to partner with you in midnight. Make sure you've got somebody on your team who will worship with you at midnight. What you don't need is people who see you going through and say, well, looks like you're under attack. Take care. <laughs> you need somebody that can see what you're going through and say, this is an opportunity for God to do a midnight miracle. Don't tell me God doesn't do things in the dark. He does his best creation in the dark. Talk to me. There was no light. There was darkness over the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. Your midnight is no match for God. In fact, he does his best creative work at midnight. Talk to me, Holy Ghost. Wait for midnight. And I dare you to praise in the middle of midnight. Because praising at midnight puts God in a position of debt. When you can praise God before the answer comes, do you understand that that transaction now means heaven owes you if you can praise before the answer comes when you have the boldness to say God I thank you that you healed my body I thank you that I'm already free God I thank you that you've taken care of the situation before it happens now heaven has to do what that praise declared so that there is no debt in your worship is there anybody that will give God a midnight praise Here's what happens if you can find one person to agree with you at midnight. Not only you and the other person get free, but anybody near you gets free. I heard somebody down there say, all right now. <laughs> Sound like a church mother. <laughs> all right now. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. Look around, identify, see if you got somebody near you that will give God a midnight praise with you. All you need is one. If you can just get one person to just praise God with you for just a couple seconds. You can do it at home too. If you're, if you're there by yourself and it's just you and the dog, just tell the dog, hallelujah. Let the dog bark in tongues. We've had teaching. We've had worship. Now it's time for demonstration. I love Jesus. I'm grateful for his teaching. But he didn't just teach. He also healed. He didn't just heal. He also drew out every devil that tried to inhabit the people of God. I want you to know that not just the, the natural application of the word belongs to you, but the supernatural manifestation of the word belongs to you. And I want you to know 2015 is your year of supernatural miracles to watch God do what he has never done before that will literally blow the roof off of what you thought God was and what you thought God could do. And your key to that level of supernatural authority is giving him a midnight praise so I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to act like it's midnight it's close to midnight his name is Jesus <laughs> 10 seconds it's midnight you just got some news you, you weren't expecting. You just got a call you didn't know. A letter just came, certified. You had to sign for it. You know, when you got to sign for it, it's probably not good. It's midnight. What do you do? Go. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Praise him. The enemy is confused. The enemy is scattered. He doesn't understand why you're still worshiping. He hits you with his best shot, and you're still giving God praise. I can hear the enemy saying, why won't they? He has cut the cord of the wicked and so you are walking into your purpose with no strings attached. Walk into your new season, no strings attached. 
Walk into your victory, no strings attached. And no matter what the enemy has said, count it all joy. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. You can remain standing, I'm done now. Yeah, bring out the band, start playing some premium tender music or something. <laughs> the Bible says in James to count it all joy. And trials come. Are there any basketball fans in here? As you can tell from my amazing physique, I play basketball, not but I watch it on TV. There are times when the guy with the ball goes up or the girl with the ball goes up, shoots, gets fouled. The ball goes in and the announcer says, and one. Count it. Even though you got fouled, the basket still counts. Count it. So no matter what the enemy has tried, he tried to hit you with his best shots in 2014, but you still had your hands up in praise. You still had your hands up in worship. So no matter what he's tried, count it and one, and you get a miracle, and there's favor, and there's abundance, and there's overflow, and there's increase, and one. Count it all joy when trials come your way. All it does is bring you more strength more perseverance and more patience. Count it. Come on and foul me, devil. Count it. Come on and hit me again. Count it. Do your best. Count it. And if you hit me too hard, there's somebody waiting on the sidelines who's never missed a shot. And he will cover me in my deficient areas. He is the undisputed, undefeated, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is Mary's baby, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. He is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. And because of what he did, I get to live life in 2015 with no strings attached. Can somebody give him a praise. I was 19 years old when I gave my life to the Lord and everything changed. I didn't have any desire to go back to that old life. I wanted to walk with the Lord and learn more about Him. And some people helped me to learn the Bible and to learn how to pray and to learn about my new life in Christ. And that's what we want to do for you. I am so excited that you've given your life to the Lord. He's forgiven all of your sins and you're on your way to heaven. But we need to learn some things now about the Bible, about prayer, about some basics of the Christian life so that you can be victorious and live for the Lord like I know you want to. So we've designed a class called Fresh Start. And I wanna encourage you to sign up for this class because we wanna help you grow in your walk with the Lord now. I love you and I'm so proud of you.